Well, welcome again to another episode. This is Liz here. I'm, I'm actually providing financial updates and I call it in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and jump into another uh, good handpicked articles, which is what I'm, I'm actually um, picking around just to make it a lot easier for the audience. And this one is about the nine best practices for small businesses taxes. That's right. Nine best practices for small business taxes. Now you must be thinking, gee, by the time maybe you hear this, this is tax season is not yet here. And you might be wondering this, I don't want to think about taxes right now. Well, yes, yes, please do. Because it's also so important to prepare prior to actually filing your taxes. So anyhow, the very first thing that the article says here is hire the right accountant. What does that really mean? Well, not all accountants are really made equally. They're not. Uh, same as tax professionals, right? And I always say you always want to niche in one that understands your industry. So for example, if your e-commerce business and you're selling an Amazon, eBay, for example, I specialize in e-commerce and I understand your industry. Not every accountant does. Yes, as accountants, we can do, in general, we can do accounting principles. That means we can work for any industry. However, it's like a doctor. The more they specialize, right, the better they are. So the same thing happens in the accounting industry and it happens to attorneys. So please take your time to always pick the right hire the right accountant, okay? Because that's gonna benefit your company at the long term. Now, is it gonna cost me more money? That's what I get that question all the time. Yeah, possibly you will. The same way you pay more money when you see a doctor who's a specialist, right? One thing is to have a skin rash and you go to a dermatologist, right? It's gonna cost you more, of course, but you can expect more from their expertise, right? Same thing with accounting, anyhow. Uh, second bullet point here, number two, claim all income that is reported to the IRS. Now, I see this happening a lot. You get 1099s, you work independently, maybe you have an LLC or you still have an established one because you don't want to deal with the headache of filing maybe a separate return. And maybe you want to keep just doing your Schedule C, right, as a sole proprietorship. And therefore, that's fine. I always tell people it, it depends how much income you're already making. Now, that's like the magic question when they tell me, Liz, when should I start really thinking about, you know, filing or preparing myself to get, a, you know, a corporation? It depends, really. I mean, uh, I would think there's no magic number, but I would normally suggest that if you're making above $50,000, it might be a good time for you to start, you know, establishing yourself uh, under a business corporation. Okay. So, why is it important to claim all your um, income as you've been reported to the IRS? Because like I said, you could be receiving multiple 1099s, right? And what's going to happen, all right, is that those reports are being reported to Uncle Sam. And guess what? You, when you file your return, make sure you add those. Because here's the thing. What I get a lot of times is, oh, one of my, you know, uh, uh, um, inventors forgot to send me 1099. It doesn't matter. Guess what? They probably send it to the IRS. And if that happened, they, I can assure you they're going to be comparing your return to what your other vendors have reported to them. So please don't, don't make that mistake because it's hard to, and I know a lot of people try to, but it's really hard to kind of fool the IRS. Remember, there are too many brains thinking there, and they have a lot of artificial intelligence software that now they can just so easily scan things. So it's not worth getting in trouble. It really isn't, please. So again, uh, keep records. Absolutely. Even if it's digital, even if you're scanning or you have an image, so you see, keep just record of all that information. It's a nice backup. And it's great in, in if you get audited, okay? Number four, separate business from personal expenses. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this. Absolutely, absolutely. I understand the ming at the beginning, you're going to be mixing and mingling. I know that's typical. The majority of business do do it, but they get into trouble also because of that. And it's hard to, if you get into that habit, it's hard to break it later on. So why not start on the right foot, right? From the beginning, right? Number five, understand the difference between net and gross income. Folks, 
right? So for instance, this is a good example here. If you if it costs up $100 to make a product and you sell it for $150, right? Your gross income is $50, okay? Now, remember you have to deduct, you know, other expenses. So by the time you deduct overhead costs, payroll, uh, you know, uh, maybe rent or anything else that you have, you might end up only $10 net, okay? So that's the big differential, okay? Now, classify your business. Why is this? Again, uh, whether you decide that you want to open a limited liability, right? LLC, if you want to open perhaps a, you know, a, an S corporation, a single, uh, you know, uh, you know, or maybe even a partnership, that's fine. Now, remember, the choice is yours, but make it make it wisely. And I always tell people it doesn't cost that much to hire maybe even a, a business attorney or a, like I said, a business accountant, they can guide you what's going to be more beneficial to you at the beginning. Remember, as you grow, well, you can always, you know, uh, get yourself another corporation. But in the beginning, we want to make something that's going to be efficient tax wise for you. Again, we're talking about your specific needs. Now, manage payroll. Now, in these days, oh, my gosh, everything is so easy, right? We have so many big companies out there, uh, you know, providing payroll. Um, I don't get any kickbacks by, you know, announcing any names here. But we know that ADP is one of the big players out there, and they, they really have minimized their payroll expenses, okay? Uh, we have other big companies that are provided through their accounting softwares, uh, you know, such as, you know, QuickBooks. They provide payroll that you can do also online and many other good competitors out there. Um, and everything is just, you know, money efficient. I mean, it's going to save you a lot of money, right, instead of hiring HR. Uh, but as you grow... Yes, it's very important that you keep track of your um, staff records, you know, and eventually maybe hire, you know, an, a, you know, a, a nature manager. Uh, and again, seek accountants advice, attorneys advice, business plans. We need to look at a projection. What are your plans today? What are you seeing yourself growing in the next year, in the next three years, in the next five years? Uh, this is going to help you to keep you not only motivated, but also to have a clear vision of where you're going. I always say sometimes it's not people that don't have motivation, it's just they don't have a clear vision of where they're heading. And that's why you need other people to support you and help you in the process, right? Uh, and again, capitalization, very important. If you buy big assets, these things have to be cap cap capitalization and depreciation. So it's important that you communicate with your actual accountant or whoever's in charge of doing your taxes, right? So again, the nine best practices for small business taxes, recap, hire the right accountant based in your industry, claim all the income that is reported to the IRS through 1099, keep adequate records, four separate business for personal expenses, five, understand the difference between net and gross income, six, correctly classify your business with your general, general ledger account and also what type of entity you're planning to open, Seven, manage payroll correctly. Eight, seek an accountant advice or like I said, an attorney or someone in your field. Maybe you know another business owner that has been running their industry for a long time. And finally, number nine, take advantage of capitalization rules that's going to help you the long term with depreciation and a lot of times even extra bonuses. So anyhow, I hope this kind of tips have been um, you know, helpful to you. And again, I'm gonna be coming out with very short, 10 minutes or less of a lot of uh, you know, updates, not only financially for business owners um, like yourself or new entrepreneurs who are coming around the block. My name is Liz Ori again, and I hope you like and share and subscribe. It definitely helps me to keep up the free content here. Um, and again, I am actually a proactive accountant and tax advisor. And I do specialize in e-commerce, real estate, and other type of turned investments, okay? Uh, so thank you so much. And I'll be seeing you next one. And like I said, just stay tuned for the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.